So if you're looking at these four different countries from, which, from where we work, you will notice that these pictures depict women and men trying to provide good food and nutrition for their households in vastly different circumstances, very different cultural settings, very different um, agroecological conditions, very different gender norms. And the question that we ask, that I'm trying to ask in this paper is, what dimensions of women's empowerment matter for child nutrition and for maternal nutrition? So in an attempt to do that, we developed the Women's Empowerment in Agriculture Index to understand this process. It's a process, um, the index is made up of two sub-indices. One looks at five domains of empowerment, and the other one compares the woman's empowerment with the primary male in her household. Um, there are five domains, um, which I'm not going to go through in great detail, and 10 indicators which make up these domains. So we have data from six countries, Bangladesh, Cambodia, Ghana, Nepal, Mozambique, and Tanzania. And these are from the Feed the Future data sets. They are large data sets. Um, they are not all nationally representative except for Bangladesh. They estimate, and we estimate the relationship between nutrition outcomes and women's empowerment using regression analysis with controls for individual household and community characteristics. We do two types of regressions. In one, in one set of regression, we regress the aggregate index, so the, the 5DE score, which is the score of the woman in all five domains. Um, we also compare her score to that of her um, partner. Um, so that's the inter-household inequality score. And then we look at the effects of the 10 indicators separately. The reason we do that is that the aggregate index often masks the little things that are going on at the sub-indicator level. And if you're a policy maker or a programmer and you want to affect um, things on the ground, it is easier for you to work at the indicator level because those are things that your program can directly affect. So first of all, if this graph looks very blurry, that is intentional. Um, and the reason is that there is no clear relationship between the overall women's empowerment score based on the five domains except in South Asia. Um, in Ghana, Mozambique, and Tanzania, the results are not statistically significant. Um, we do find um, improvements in nutritional outcomes in South Asia, but not for all outcomes. So my first prediction that you're not gonna see the same pattern all over, I think, holds. What is interesting is that in general, Lower inequality or greater equality within the household is better for nutritional outcomes. So the indicator is scored in terms of um, the bigger the gap, you want things to be below the zero line because the big, a bigger gap is bad, so you, you, you want to see more things under the line. And we're seeing that for outcomes like um, hunger, um, dietary diversity, BMI, etc., you, you want the scores to be below the line because what this means is that decreasing inter-household inequality improves nutrition. The only exception um, appears to be in um, weight for age in Bangladesh. And that is a very strange um, finding that we're trying to unpack further. Now, because the results are so ambiguous across the, when you look at all the countries, we decided to focus in on one country. We can take any of them. But we decided to focus on Nepal um, because we know this data very well. This is the one that Sunita was involved in, the Suhara project. And what's quite interesting here is that we see that women's autonomy in production, asset rights, and comfort in public speaking are associated with lower household hunger scores. I'm not going to pretend that there's anything causal here. These are all associations. Um, but we see that different dimensions of women's empowerment affect women's nutritional outcomes in different ways, and there seem to be trade-offs trade involved. What is very interesting is that if you look at the block on the left, these are blocks related to direct participation in agriculture, agricultural decisions, agricultural assets owned, assets with rights. And these ones seem to have negative impacts or negative associations with women's dietary diversity and BMI. Um, income decisions, her decision-making power, 
has positive associations. And the ones which work well for her are satisfaction with leisure and being able to speak in public. And our work is also has a negative association, which sort of makes you think that I'm not sure that women's heavy participation in agriculture is necessarily good for her nutrition. Just think about that. So we find that group member participation in group reduces exclusive breastfeeding and satisfaction with leisure improves the dietary diversity score. And lastly, um, a question on trade-offs. Again, we see things on the left which are more associated with participa direct participation in agriculture. Um, assets owned, assets with rights have negative associations with H HAZ. And um, our work has a negative association with these outcomes as well for children. If you were expecting uniformity and consistency, you would be disappointed. But that's not surprising, I think, because gender norms are very context specific. But even though um, the pattern of results does not point towards generalizability, there are some very suggestive things which are coming out, which are the associations with time use and women's involvement in agriculture. Time use associations, such as workload and leisure, show the most consistency in terms of the direction of association with a particular outcome, and they hold across countries. And what may have been surprising, but we're understanding more and more now, is that as we see women becoming more involved in agriculture in Nepal, we are seeing some trade-offs in terms of her time use and possibly on her nutritional status. The implication here is that the, for agricultural invent, interventions which target women and try to provide opportunities for empowerment really must look at unintended consequences, particularly for time use. So as we entered, as we entered this research process, we weren't really sure what we were going to find. Um, we found that time was very important. So let's take this into account as we try to design interventions to empower women in the agriculture area.